Hello guys, so this is part two to the jack-o'-lantern assignment. So we're going to go ahead and take those two pinch pots that we made. If you remember, a little recap, we made two balls of clay that were the same size. Each ball of clay we're making into a pinch pot. We try to hold our hands the same, we try to pinch the clay the same, we try to do everything the same so that our two pinch pots come out the same size, the same shape, and most importantly, the same diameter rim because we're gonna be joining these two together um, to make a hollow ball. So I've got my two pinch pots that I made and also a little reminder, we wanna keep the bottoms rounded. Try not to make them flat. It'll make it much easier when we paddle this to get a nice rounded shape for our jack-o'-lantern um, with an already rounded top. If it's flat, you're gonna have an edge here and it's gonna look like a can or a barrel and it's hard to tap and get rid, of that, get rid of that edge. So keep them rounded, okay? And again, make them about a quarter of an inch in thickness. If you leave any thickness anywhere, just leave it up at the rim. So I have a little bit of a sponge here, um, padding that came in a box of, uh, I think it was some clay um, supplies. So I'm just gonna rest my pinch pots on them so that they don't get flattened on the bottom. Um, if you have something like that at home, you can use a towel or whatever, um, but if not, it'll be okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crosshatch the rims of these and paint them with slip. So you can use a needle tool, you can use a sharp pencil, you can use the tip of a knife. Um, for the sake of being quicker, I use a fork and it's got four prongs so it goes a little faster and I'm just going to rough up edges here by scoring into them with the fork. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's just going to help rough up the weave of the clay so that it'll join together a little bit better. Some people will say you don't need to do this, especially if your clay is very soft. I was taught to do it, so I just am kind of passing it along. Um, I find that it helps things join together better. Um, so I continue to do it. However, if you watch some other videos, don't be surprised if someone says it's a bunch of nonsense and that you don't need to do it. And I think if your clay is really moist and you're blending it really well, you might be able to get away without doing it. But since our clay may be more towards the leather hard state, we're going to do it just to ensure that we get a good join. So once you have those cr cross hatched, take some of your slip and again, remember we want our slip to be about the consistency of a creamy yogurt. And go ahead and put plenty of that on there. We can always wipe away the excess, but we want to make sure we have plenty so that this is going to get a good join. Do that to both pieces that you're going to join. Just kind of slather it on there, dab it on whatever it takes. All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some newspaper or a paper towel, um, something that will help support the inside of our pinch pot while we join it, because the clay is soft. So if you have some newspaper at home, you can get yourself just kind of one full sheet to try to start with. We don't want to stuff it in there, but we want it to be in there to support it nicely. So we're going to take that sheet of newspaper and just crunch it up into a ball. And like I said, we don't want to stuff both halves and make it so tight that um, when we put our two pinch pots together, as they dry and shrink a little bit, um, it will cause this to bulge out and it'll show through in our pumpkin. So we want it to just kind of rest in there loosely. And that's just enough to provide some support. So just let it rest in there. Don't stuff it, only in one half. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the pinch pots and we're gonna set it on top. Now, sometimes if your rims are slightly, one's bigger than the other, or there might be a gap there, sometimes you can spin it and turn it and find where it's gonna line up best. But we wanna go ahead and try to get that to line up so they match evenly and so we don't have any big gaps. 
And your clay should be soft enough that at this point, you can still kind of push it in so that the two match up nicely. Okay, so I'm just lightly working with that, putting those two pieces together, using my thumbs as I support it with my hands to just kind of push in where those two pieces meet, where the seam is. Okay, so then I'm gonna set it here. I'm gonna wipe away some of the extra slip you can scrape it back off on your container or on your board, whatever is easiest. And just go around and check on that. Make sure that you don't have any big gaps. So now what we want to do is we want to take our rib tool. Now if you went out and got some ceramic tools, they're your wooden one that looks kind of like an ear shape, that's a rib tool. If you have one of those, that's what I would prefer using, um, something a little bit firmer. If you don't have one of those and you have an old gift card, you could use that. Or if you don't have an old gift card, get last year's school ID. It's the same thing. You can use that as well. Um, if you don't have that and you have a ruler that has not too wide of an edge, you could use that like a rib tool also. Since I do have a rib tool here, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to try and turn this where you guys can see. I hope my hands don't block what I'm doing. But what we want to do is take that rib tool and we want to scrape the clay from the bottom of that join up across it and turn it as you're doing it. It's okay if your pinch pots move and change their shape because we're going to be paddling them in the next video to get it into the shape we really want for our pumpkin. So at this point, what we're concerned about is getting these two pieces joined together well. And you can scrape from the bottom to the top, or you can scrape sideways, whatever it takes. Go all the way around and try and scrape some of that clay up to where it covers the seam. And once you make it all the way around, you can go more than once, whatever it takes. Sometimes the first time around, it, the clay is kind of just sliding where the slip was. You're not really grabbing clay and pulling it up there. So work around it, then flip it over, do the same thing now from the other direction. And again, just use that edge. I'm not pushing real hard, but I'm pushing firm enough to grab a little bit of that clay and smear it up over the seam so that hopefully I get a really nice join. And again, don't worry about changing the shape of your pumpkin or your pinch pots at this point. You do have newspaper inside, so that's going to help support it as you work with it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it lightly here and roll it on the board a little bit. It's going to flatten out where that seam is and if I have a weak spot it's going to want to start to split open there and if it starts to split open then I'm just going to go back now with my rib tool and I'm going to scrape it a little bit more to help join it and to reinforce that weak spot. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment. It can lay sideways or can stand up, whichever way it will um, rest there and not move. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of soft clay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a coil. Coil is a rope-like strand of clay. And so what you're going to do, put it between your hands and go ahead and start it. You can flip it over and come from both ends just to get it started. It doesn't have to be perfect. Put it on your board and now just roll back and forth. And if it gets wrinkly and whatever, that's perfectly fine. 
We just don't want it to be dry and cracky, so we want it to be nice, soft clay. Now we're gonna leave it about a quarter to half inch in thickness, okay? And make it fairly long. Now if you can't make one long one and you need to make two of them um, for what we're gonna do, then you can do it in pieces. But one long one is always nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna set it right over where our seam is. So you should still be able to tell where your seam is somewhat to know where to lay this. And just start and wrap it completely around where you join the two pieces. And what I found over the years is if you do this little step, then after your jack-o'-lantern is um, finished and fired as the clay shrinks, you won't see the seam. If you don't do this step, because of the way the clay shrinks and fires, you'll be able to see the seam, even through the coat of glaze. So we want to press that on there. Now, because it's really soft clay, we don't need to cross hatch and slip it, okay? So what we're gonna do is what's called blending. So as we support it from the middle of the clay, you're gonna take your thumb and pinch and smear it into the pinch pot. And then on the other side, do the same thing. So from the middle, you're gonna smear it outwards, whether it's to the right or the left or the upper or lower part, um, depending on which way you wanna hold your pumpkin. And you're gonna smear that in all the way around. And again, it's adding a little bit of thickness in the middle section where your join is, and that's just gonna to help to strengthen it and reinforce the join, especially if you had any weak spots. And, as I said, it's going to go ahead and help it to not show that seam when your clay dries and it's fired. Okay, and just go back around. It's okay if it looks a little bit messy. We're going to take care of that. Okay, just make sure you get that nice coil blended in there. And again, my pinch pots are really soft, so as I'm doing this, I'm being a little bit delicate in the way I hold it. I don't want to manhandle my pinch pots at this point because I don't want to smash or change the shape um, too much of what I have going on. Okay. If you're right or left-handed, you can flip it and use the same hand. or you can use both hands. If you're ambidextrous, that's a great thing because you'll find in ceramics, sometimes in order to get in places and smooth and do things, you gotta be able to use both your hands. Okay, so once we do that, we wanna get rid of this ridge here a little bit. This is where I clean the surface of my board and I roll it on the board. It's gonna flatten down that little bit of clay and it'll start to help clean it up a little bit. And if your board gets really moist and you feel like it's sticking too much, you can always move it around on your board to a drier spot, okay? And again, by doing this, it's also gonna show you if you have a weak spot. If you get a weak spot and you feel like it starts to crack or split open there, then just go back with a little bit more clay and go ahead and just make another little coil and put it over the weak spot and then blend it in, just like we just did, okay? So now, I'm gonna use this to support it again. I'm gonna go back with my rib tool again. And sometimes your rib tool will pick up the clay. If that's the case, just clean it off of there. Because if it stays on there, sometimes it just gunks up on your tool and then sticks to your project. So then we're gonna go back now and we're gonna go with the rib tool one more time and we're gonna smooth that out. Again, go from the bottom to the top, right over the top of the seam and just keep turning it as you go, okay? Try not to dig in and undo what we just did in terms of hiding the seam, but try to just smooth it out so there's not a ridge there.
This is just going to reinforce our joint. That way we know it's not going to split. We don't have to worry about our jack-o'-lantern coming apart when we go to shape it. Like I say, every once in a while, you might want to clean off your tool just to take away some of that extra clay so it ends up looking a little bit neater. smoother. Okay, so again at this point I would go back, roll it again, check some of the areas if I need to, take my finger and smooth over them. You can tilt it on its side and smooth out some of those little rough areas. But again, just working to smooth out that joint. Now this is where I love the cards. Because if you take the cards, they flex and they can match the curve of the side here. So a lot of times what I'll do is take the card and make sure it's clean that it doesn't have any dried clay on it because otherwise it's going to scrape into your surface. Flex the card now and scrape along the seam there and it's going to smooth it out and as you scrape along it's going to pick up little bits of clay on the surface of the card. If you want you can use your finger and clean that off or sometimes you can just scrape it off on the surface of your board and then later gather that up and if it's a little dry, put it in your slip jar, and that way it'll turn into, get soft and mix in with your slip. But you can see, if you don't clear clean it off, it sticks back onto your project. So I'm going to go around, and I'm going to continue doing this. Um, all the area where I spread the clay. I'm going to try to smooth it all out and make it look nice and clean and again after I do it one direction I'm gonna flip my project over and I'm gonna do the other side as well and you can see it just really smooths out the surface gives us a really nice join and then what we're going to do is we're going to bag this up overnight. So all this um, is kind of part two, I would say. And then part three, we will be using a paddle. So I'm going to show you those here in a minute. And we will be lightly tapping our project to get it into the shape that we want. And then from there, we'll be adding our lines to make it look like a jack o Okay? So that's about all I'm going to do on this at this point, because I don't want the video to be too long. What I would do is I would probably smooth this out with the card just a little bit more. And then I might take a sponge. And um, actually, I'll do the sponge part. Give me one second. just so we're clear when I talk about sponging. If you have a sponge and some water, get it wet, squeeze all the water out of the sponge, okay, so that it's moist but it's not real wet. Now go back and sponge over the entire thing. Make it as nice and as smooth as you can get it. Once you've done that all the way around, flip it over and do the same thing from the other side. And you can see, I just kind of go back and forth. And you can see it'll smooth out all the marks, all the nicks in the clay. It'll make the surface nice and smooth and even. Again, you don't want it real wet, because if it's real wet, it's going to make your project slimy and messy. 
And at the same time, if it gets too wet and your clay takes on too much moisture, then when it sits overnight, just from its, the weight of the moisture in it and from it softening your clay, your project will want to split open. You'll come in the next day, it'll look like a cracked egg and you'll think, somebody messed with my project. And it's not. It's just because the weight of the moisture and the clay itself and the softness of it will cause it to split open. So again, you're dipping your sponge in the water, but you're squeezing almost all the water out of your sponge. And I'm doing this kind of fast because I just don't want the videos to be too long for you guys. So I'm trying to break it down in steps. But you got to realize I'm trying to make this in real time and I want it to be as perfect and as nice as I possibly can get it. Okay, so once I've done that and I've cleaned it up, I'm going to get a spare plastic bag. And I gave you guys some of those when I gave you your clay at the start of the quarter. So you're going to make sure that there aren't any fragments of dried up clay in there. You're going to take your project and you're going to go ahead and put it into the corner of the bag where you can get almost all the air out of the bag. Okay? It's wet so it'll want to stick a little bit. But put it in that corner. Go ahead and try and wrap it around it and get all the air out. We don't want it to dry out. Okay? Then you can go ahead and just twist it up and tuck the bag underneath it. And you can probably use the bag as a support. If you do have the sponge or a towel or something you want to set it on so it doesn't get a flat spot, you can set it on it. But there might be enough bag there that that'll support it on its own. So at this point, I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to let that hang out overnight and it's going to get it, have a chance for the clay to really join together. So that's a strong seam, um, a strong join, and we won't have to worry about it splitting open when we go to paddle it. So now, um, as I told you guys, we're going to be paddling it or tapping it. And so we're going to be using a wood board. So if you're at home and you have some sort of wood board like this, just a trim piece that you can use to tap it with, we're not going to we're going to lightly tap it, and I'll show you that in the next video. And that's going to help us to round off the edges to put it into a nice shape. If you can't find a wood board, maybe you've got a ruler at home. Now the ruler, it doesn't have as much weight behind it, so you might have to tap a little harder. I like something with a little more weight behind it, um, like just a piece of trim mold. If you've got a yardstick that's a little thicker than a ruler, you could use that also. So um, between now and the next video, or when you get to this point, be looking around your house for something that you can use as a light paddle, okay? And that will really help you out in terms of shaping it so that it looks like an actual squash or a pumpkin. Um, and then, again, um, be finding a card or a rib tool because that's gonna help you out, okay? Um, I know the video doesn't show my face, but um, I want you to focus in on the actual project and what we're doing to actually join it. So I'm not worried about if my head's cropped off. All right, I'll see you on the next one.